It's actually a, a good question from the chat. Somebody asking for ten dollars of game of the night. Do both players get it or only the player who won? Correct me if I'm wrong. It's the player that won simply for the fact that they're usually the one that showed the better play. Right. Um, sometimes both players will get it if that's actually a legitimate game of the night performance from both players. Um, but generally, if your performance is game of the night worthy, then you usually win that game, right? right. Um, so it is for the best performance. Uh, it just happens to 99% of the time be to the player who wins that game. Okay, so going on to game number six for our player down here in the bottom right. He is our purple Terran. <laughs> he is... Complexity QXC. His opponent's going to be in the top left. We have our red Protoss. He is... MTWTT1. So people asking for the link to the voting. Uh, our mods are all over it. Yep. No, Nobody gets votes right now. Zero percent. Yep. Nobody. Again, make sure you guys uh, go check out our sponsor, uh, GameCash.net. Always helpful. And the nice thing is that it's not like our uh, everyone else's typical sponsors. We actually have to buy something to show your support. All you have to do is click on it. Um, they're looking for views and registration. And even if you register, you don't have to pay anything, obviously. It's just helpful for you. So a great way to support esports without actually having to do anything, which I know none of you like to do because everyone's lazy in esports. Because being lazy is awesome, let's be honest. So go click. <laughs> Put up an extra fifty dollars. Can I help cast? Maybe. I might allow you to do your own cast <laughs> <laughs> and and be in a couple games. TT one getting a nice scout off. Actually, seeing the expansion down there, but at the same time, what's he gonna do? He hasn't actually expanded, which uh, could consider surprising. So command center before barracks, what do you think the correct option for TT1 is? Straight to Nexus or lay on the aggression? Can, uh, can you even be aggressive versus this? On this map, it's incredibly hard. Well, second rack's the, the top of the ramp, just so you can get those marines out, just in case. But, yeah, he should have plenty of bunkers up. Uh, and even... He hasn't even scouted yet because, to be honest, it's either going to be an expansion or a, a just finishing cybernetic score, which it is. So warp gate on the way, and it looks like TT1 is going to be choosing to expand. And QXC, if he goes out for the scout right now, he should be able to see it just fine. I, we don't even see any units coming out for TT1. Souls, probably no stalkers, no sentries. He says, I don't care. You're not going to be able to attack. I don't need any units. So he should just be chrono boosting out probes from this part. You can see him, he's, uh, he's already up 23 to 19. He's doing pretty good. So we'll see if he's able to keep that lead as the command center becomes an orbital down here on the low ground. And QXC actually starts to saturate that. So SCV does verify the fact that there's the expansion down there. Second gas just coming up, which is a pretty late second gas. It means he's not going to be able to tech up too quickly here. No quick uh, DTs or anything like that, especially. And he's going to be happy with that. Should just be able to leave, although he might try to get a bunker. Huh? No. I'm actually a little surprised he didn't try to go for the bunker, considering he has in the, the previous games. But I guess Stalker being out would have probably looked for it. Maybe that's what he expected. Didn't want to waste the money. He's actually looping around with that SCV. Maybe just keep it here on the left side. He could obviously proxy something like a factory, try to float it in. But already on top of that TT1 with the pylon in the edge. I'm not going to be fooled. Now as far as the follow-up here from QXC, he has gotten both of his gases. He's just on three racks right now. But not throwing down any tech labs. Could indicate that either he just hasn't done it yet or he's just going to go straight to the factory. Oh, oh, there's the tech lab. There we Pretty go. hard to go straight into factory. Doesn't make a lot of sense. You're rushing He's... up your medivacs, but no upgrades. He, he is getting a quick uh, third gas. I would call it quick at least. But no NG bay yet. There's a fourth <coughs> barracks. And that tells me he, he is probably going to go into some pretty heavy aggression. Um, I mean, just because it's QXC. 
<laughs> yeah. A lot of times, if you go for a command center first, then obviously for a regular Rax and then command center, you add on to your three. But since your first Rax uh, is later, then you add on a fourth so that you can kind of make up for that production and kind of hold the same kind of attacks. I think he looked. No, he got the left to the right spot. Reactor's coming down right now. And he is going to have at least one bunker here. Now, the interesting thing is that we actually have a warp prism out. I'm not sure where it went. There it is, just coming out in the main. Yeah, this is really, really smart by uh, TT1. Yeah, so he's going to be able to avoid the bunkers at the front. He could actually just elevate her in, into the back with his entire army if you really wanted to. Yep, but again, command center first. You're slowing down all that tech. So you've got these uh, really squishy marines. We see that Stim is going first rather than combat shield. So again, they're not going to have any really bonus life. And once they're out of those bunkers, they're going to be easy pickings. Uh, it's just going to come down to how much pressure TT1 is going to apply here. Uh, he's only adding on two more gateways, but only running off of uh, the current three right now, I believe. So this warp prism can be able to drop, what, three sentries, a stalker, and then maybe warp in another three additional units. So it's going to be annoying, definitely, but uh, not any kind of all-in attack. Yeah. Oh, oh, a nice catch there. Fields. Yeah, this is actually a little tougher than normal, given the placement of the supply depots. He can't get in as close, but he still managed to work it. Getting a good number of worker kills so far. Seven workers going down. And the total number of workers out for both players. 53 to 41. A huge lead here for TT1. He's going to get out without losing a single unit. I think he's going to get out without taking a single bit of damage either. <laughs> Not that it really matters, but very, very nice. Just trading again. Energy for something that costs. And SCV is certainly something that costs. Mm -hmm. So supplies even here, but uh, TT1 getting the better end of that trade. And he's uh, tacked up a little bit faster. Obviously he's got that robo down. He's going into blink already. He's got those double upgrades coming out. Uh, whereas just now the first two medevacs are coming out for QXC. So uh, yeah, it's going to take a little while for them to build up energy. And so the stim attacks in the mid game uh, not going to be as effective per se. Yeah, QXC going for slower upgrades, number one. He's going for single upgrades, number two. And... Quite frankly, I think the Immortals are going to be a great addition to this with just a few Marauders in here already. We might just see a massacre if TT1 handles this right. Now, TT1 oh. a little bit down on supply, but he's got plenty of force fields saved up. He still has that Warp Prism if he wanted to go for counter-aggression. Uh, yeah, an interesting choice here. The, the Observer saw the units moving, and a lot of times you'll see players um, oh, use oh, that oh, Warp Prism. He's oh. going to lose it! Huge, huge uh, win there. For QXC. But again, mm -hmm. oftentimes when you see the, that Terran move out, you drop the Warp Prism again. But now QXC's turn to drop here, double Medivac drop into the main, and T21 a little bit distracted trying to take down those rocks. He's going to lose a little bit uh, of, of units here. Oh, oh, oh! Blink not done yet, otherwise he might be able to take out that full Medivac and oh, the army is going to pull back. Blink now finishing, and not a whole lot of Stalkers to actually take those down. Yeah, QXC might have to back off. Going Blink and still only has four stalkers right now. Uh, I guess one was in that uh, warp prism, but still. A nice resupply from QXC coming up, but I mean, he's still got a decent number of units here. But if TT1 actually engages for the reinforcements are here, a nice guardian shield. And, oh, those force fields. He's actually getting a lot of kills on QXC. Supply is now tipping in favor of TT1, just barely. And QXC, I'm not sure if he's going to push in or not. Oh, TT1 has uh, got those level 2 upgrades on the way. Third base mm -hmm. now coming down at the 12.30 mark. QXC looking to maybe drop again. There's Guardians the got that out. But his army is completely out of position. He needs to actually oh. get there. Oh man, this might be bad. TT1 realizes he's going to try to blink up, but he might actually just lose his stalkers here. There he goes. Blinks most of them up. And he's oh, and he's level two lose upgrade. one of the upgrades down. Is he gonna lose yeah. both of them? He is. Both of his that plus two upgrades go down. And now TT1 continuing to try to hold this off. Marines and Marauders doing so much damage here. Number of workers killed starting to climb. 13, 14, 15. As QXC just maximizing the amount of damage he can do here, staying up on supply now. 105 versus 131 is he's trying to make it back out of the base. Catching a couple of the stalkers that have to blink back. 
force fields wasted for almost no reason. Now they're trapped in a corner, but... Oh, the rest of the army pushing up the yeah. ramp. And catching the units on the ramp right now. The Zealots just trying to get down there. A nice lift behind those force fields. And the supply is still 20 in favor of QXC. Just looking at the resources lost. Uh, about a thousand in favor of QXC right now in terms of efficiency. The only thing hurting him at this point is the fact that he does not have a third base done. Right. But that was... One. That was Way perfect. out of position for that drop. No reason to be out in the middle of the map here. Mm -hmm. But uh, he's trying his luck here. He knows he needs to push something. Uh, he's getting a pretty good engagement there with those Immortals in place. Able to drop a couple few uh, good force fields. But still, he, he's, he's even up the score a little bit here. 122 supply to 134. So not as large as it was right as when that drop happened. But again, oh, actually, never mind. QXC does not look like he has any Vikings out. And that Colossus might just be the difference that TT1 needs. Now, he does have the third base, so he feels pretty comfortable. But he lost way too much in that little engagement beforehand. QXC could be going a little overboard on the, the Metavax. As he's continued to just double produce those. Did he even see that? I think he saw the Colossus there when he was running back. And there he... Uh, I'm not even sure if he sees it there, but he is getting Vikings out. Plenty of uh, mortals actually in the front of the army. This is going to be incredibly tough for him to take down. And he might just go for that drop again. See if TT1 does the same thing. And look at that. TT1 says, nope. Uh, I'm going back to my main. I, I'm not doing that. And QX just drops his units again. Uh, and a couple units actually trying. It was basically a diversion. He was trying to get a couple units up to that third. Did not actually make it since TT1 didn't actually fully retreat. Oh man. So many units in the main. The Colossus actually out of position. Could get sniped if he's not careful. And oh, it is so close to going down. <laughs> 29 health, mostly sentries in the front here. Mortal stuck in the back, not actually attacking. His own force fields keeping him from defending his base. And the army a little split up, but. Very little that can actually attack up, and QXC lifts off and gets out of there. Yeah, just such great strategic positioning, and we already see the units moving on the minimap. If you were just to watch this game in the minimap, you could just see the intelligence that's displayed here by uh, QXC. Mm -hmm. Drawing his unit's opponents away, uh, now he's just going to take out that third base as well. Killed off all the production here, so he even knows that uh, QX, or sorry, TT1 can't even really warp in to defend that. And just instant kills. It's all these free engagements for, for QXC. We yeah. see his units are really, really well uh, off in terms of how much life they have. And they've just been trading and getting a whole bunch of engagements. Uh, killing off uh, gateways for free, not taking any real damage. And that just put him up uh, a solid 50 supply right now. Now I want to point out just how smart that engagement was from QXC. When he left the base, he didn't leave the base. He kept the Metavax on the left side, right outside the range of the cliff. Purposely so TT1 would go after him, pulling his units further away for for really no gain. Uh, that was just so beautiful. And right now TT1 having to split up his army, keeping stalkers, uh, a huge stalker force at that. Oh, look face. at this. Empty medevacs. Even faking with the medevacs for a second. Does not want to lose them though. And catching this. The oh, Colossus goes dude, down. from behind. Colossus goes down immediately. The Immortals are going to fall. And the supply is wow. now 50 in favor of QXC. Blink from the high ground. The medevacs go down. Uh, could be a huge loss, but now the stalkers can't even blink back up. 80 supply versus 160. QXC is double the supply. Has his third base mining, whereas it's just rebuilding for TT1. And he is on the death march in the main. The last Colossus here on the ramp is going to go down. The final units of TT1 fall. And there it is, GG well played. QXC takes his sixth game. I gotta say, QXC just completely outclassed TT1 that game. TT1, such a strong player, but QXC was reading him like a book. Uh, you even talked about keeping those medevacs on the left side. Not only did he move them over more to the left, he made sure that they were still in vision, making sure that TT1 couldn't just run his army over to that third. He still had to be very, very careful about how many units TT1, or sorry, QXC actually saw him move over there just so that he wouldn't be able to, to drop again. 
just such such beautiful plays there by QXC. Really understanding how to play the strategy of StarCraft, not just uh, the build order essentially. You can have all those units and most players would lose to TP1 in that situation, but wow. Just really abusing the map there. Um, and again, just showing great strategical positioning.